Hey everyone, welcome to third grade summer learning. Today we're going to be doing a reading lesson together. So I hope that your summer is off to a great start. I know that mine is and I'm really excited to be here with you today. My name is Mrs. Kinman and so let's get ready to learn. Before we get started, I know that you already know, but I'm just going to really uh, emphasize how important it is to be in the right mindset for learning. I know that you've already had practice with learning at home, and I know that you've had practice focusing on your mindset, so we're really just going to put those things together and make sure that our mindset is in the right place for learning. One way that I love to do that is to think about learning gems. And when you think about gems, you think about things that are valuable. And when you are reflecting on what is good in your life and things that are going well, that is really valuable to your mindset. So we're gonna think about some gems. The G in gems stands for what are you grateful for? You can focus on things that you're learning. You could also just focus on things in your personal life. One thing that I'm grateful for was the long weekend that we recently had, Memorial Day weekend. It's kind of like the unofficial start to summer, and I'm grateful that it was a great weekend. The E stands for something that you're excited about. I'm really excited about this summer learning program. I love to teach reading, and I know that we are going to have some really great times together. M stands for something, something that you're motivated to do. To be motivated to do something means that you're ready to do something. I know that I am motivated to keep making my summer reading plans um, so that they are fun and engaging for you. And I'm really motivated to get that work done. And the S stands for a success that you can celebrate. So think back over your week. What's something that has gone well? A success that you can celebrate. Something that comes to my mind is the school supply pickup. I hope that you were able to drive by your school and pick up your supplies from your desk and your locker. Um, if not, I'm sure you'll get your stuff later, but we were really kind of nervous about how all that was gonna go, and it was smooth, and it was great, and that was definitely a success that we can celebrate. So I hope that you take a minute to think about your own learning gems as we get started today. Now, for us to be ready to listen and ready to learn, we need to think about whole body listening. I know you're familiar with listening, Larry, so let's just review real quick so you can make sure that your mindset is ready to learn. Remember, you're gonna be listening with your eyes and listening with your ears. So you're facing the, the computer or you're facing your television. Your ears are ready to hear. Your mouth is quiet. If you're ready to listen, then your mouth is quiet. Your hands and feet are quiet and to yourself. You also listen with your body. You're gonna make sure that you're facing the speaker and you're not having any distractions. You're gonna listen with your brain. Make sure you're thinking about what I'm saying to you. Make sure you're thinking about um, the questions that you're being asked and being really thoughtful with your answers. And lastly, we listen with our heart. You're gonna have an open mind, you're gonna have an open heart, and really be ready to take in the material that we have today. So I hope that you're ready to listen and ready to uh, learn. We are gonna get started today with some word work. Um, we are going to talk about a couple of syllable patterns. These are probably very familiar to you. This is probably just a little bit of review. So let's get started. There are two syllable patterns that we are gonna look at today. The first one is CVC. That stands for consonant, vowel, consonant. For example, the word cat. So when you're looking at a CVC word, you're gonna look first at the vowel and think about what is that vowel sound. This vowel is A and A says ah. Then I'm going to go back and break apart the word to decode it. At. And when I blend those sounds together, I make the word cat. You are going to be able to follow that CVC syllable pattern to decode lots of words when you're reading. Remember to focus on the vowel sound first, what's in the middle, then break apart the word and blend it together. Let's try another one. All right, I have another CVC word. 
I'm going to look at the vowel sound first. The O says ah, so I have m, ah, p. Blend that together and that makes the word mop. Let's try another one together. We'll do one with an I. What vowel sound does an I make? I hope you said I, I. All right, read this word with me, ready? F, e, er, fur, fur, good, 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 good. All right, now we are going to take a look at our next um, syllable pattern, which is a CVR. That stands for consonant vowel plus R. Now, you might be wondering, well, what does an R have to do with a vowel sound? I'm going to tell you. If that R is connected to the vowel in many words, it controls it or it's bossing it. It's in charge and it makes the vowel sound change. Okay, for example, the word carpet. The AR is an example of a consonant vowel plus R, or you might have heard it called an R-controlled vowel. So for example, let's take a look at the word her. H-E-R. Now, if we decoded this like a consonant vowel consonant word, it would be h-e-r, hair, kind of put together. It kind of sounds a little funny. But with an R-controlled vowel, this R goes with this E, and that makes the sound er. So whenever I read this word, it is her. You might be wondering, how do I know when it's an R-controlled vowel and, whenever I, and when I decode it normally? Well, the more words that you learn to read, the more sight words that you master, the more fluent you'll become. You can also try trial and error. If you decode a word and you think, oh, that, I don't think that makes sense, go back and try and see if you can identify an R-controlled vowel in there. Let me show you another one. C-A-R. This is an R-controlled vowel. So this says R. With the C in front of it, I made the word car. And you know, I just realized that the, one of the CVC words I gave you, F-I-R, that's actually an R-controlled vowel too. The I and the R go together to make er, to make that word fur. So let me show you another um, CVC word instead. How about this word? This word is hat. Hat. Okay? So be sure to look for that R next to a vowel to see if it's an R-controlled vowel. And again, the more of these sight words you master, the less decoding you have to go syllable by syllable and the more that they will come fluently to you. So I'm gonna have you practice a few on your own now, okay? Are you ready? I'm gonna have a word on the board and I want you to practice those two syllable patterns that we just learned about and read this word yourself. What word is that? Put. That word is put. It is a CVC word, put. How about this? This is an R-controlled vowel with an er sound. This word is over. Had. The vowel sound is a, a, a. So we decode it ad, had. We have another R-controlled vowel here. This word is after. CVC word, not. Has. CVC word, I, m, him. Last word. R control, uh, an R-controlled vowel here. This word is her. Very good. 
Make sure that you look for those CVC and those CVR words when you are reading to help you decode some of those unknown words when you come to them. All right, now we're gonna do a little fluency exercise here. I have a paragraph about dinosaurs. So I need you to move to where you can see your screen. You might need to come a little closer to your TV or your computer. I want you to be able to see because we're gonna read this together. This is gonna be our first read. So we're gonna go pretty slowly. During our next lesson, we'll have the same fluency passage. By then it's a familiar read. And then you are going to be able to read it with a little bit more confidence, a little bit more fluency, a little bit more speed. So we're gonna go slow at first. I do wanna point out uh, a word, two words to you that might be a little bit tricky. The first one is carnivore. And the second one is allosaurus, okay? So this is our first fluency read practice. So we're gonna read it together and we're gonna go kind of slowly. Do your very best reading. Are you ready? Let's go. We went on a field trip. On the trip, we saw huge dinosaur bones. One of the skeletons was standing up. It was taller than my teacher. We learned that this type of dinosaur ate meat. It was a carnivore. The Allosaurus had long teeth. These big teeth helped it eat meat. It was a fantastic field trip. Nice job. We'll read that one again during our next lesson. And um, I think that you'll be able to read it even better next time. Good work. Before we listen to our story, I wanna let you know that we're focusing today on character traits. So this is a review for you about what character traits are. Character traits can talk about the inside or the outside of a character. Now, sometimes we tend to focus a little bit too much on the physical traits or the things on the outside when we're thinking about character traits. But as a reader, it's also really important for us to understand the inside of a character. What are they like on the inside? So it's not just about what we can see, like their hair color, or their eye color, or their, what they're wearing or how big they are, but also about what they're like on the inside. Pay attention to their thoughts and their words. What are some personality traits or feelings that we can understand about the character based on their words and their actions and their thoughts? So think about that as you're listening to today's story. Now you might have already guessed from all of my slides, but today's story is about a dinosaur. The story is called Crunch Munch Dinosaur by Paul Bright. And I'm gonna give you a couple of things to focus on listening uh, as we get started here. You need to be thinking about who are the main characters and how would we describe them? Think about those character traits. Not only things on the outside, but things on the inside as well. You're gonna pay attention to your reading voice, which is gonna be the voice that you hear reading the story and make sure that you are focusing on thinking about these questions and thinking about what's happening in the story. Try to eliminate that distracting voice. Any extra sounds or things that are going on that are gonna distract you from listening to the reading and thinking about the reading, try to eliminate those. All right, let's get started with our story, Crunch Munch Dinosaur. Crunch, Munch, Dinosaur Lunch by Paul Bright and Michael Terry. Crunch, Munch, Dinosaur Lunch by Paul Bright and Michael Terry. Ty was big and Ty was mean. He had a big, big mouth with big, big jaws and big, big teeth and big, big claws. Yeah, that's me, 
said Ty, Tyrannosaurus. His roar echoed around the swamp, so that the other dinosaurs trembled in their tummies. Roar! Terry was small, and Terry was sweet. She had a tiny, tiny mouth, with tiny, tiny jaws, and tiny, tiny teeth, and tiny, tiny claws. And she loved her big brother more than any Tyrannosaurus has ever been loved. Love you, Tyrannosaurus, gurgled Terry. Stay in your nest, pest, said Ty. I've got hunting to do. Ty stomped through the swamp. The ground sploshed and quaked and quivered, and the dinosaurs heard and shook and shivered. I'm hungry, roared Ty. I'm biggest, I'm baddest, I'm ready to eat. I need some fresh Stegosaurus meat. He opened his big, big mouth and... Huggle, Tyrannobus, burbled Terry, wrapping her arms around his huge leg. Ty sighed as he saw his Stegosaurus breakfast paddle off through the swamp, sniggering. You shouldn't be here, squirt, he hissed. Go back to your drooling. Now stay away. And off he stomped, snorting. Ty searched in the swamp. The dinosaurs ran and hid. They peered through the reeds and peeked from behind rocks. But it's not easy to hide when you're a dinosaur. I'm starving, roared Ty. I'm biggest, I'm baddest, I'm ready for lunch. I need Triceratops bones to crunch. He bared his big, big teeth and... Kisu. Tyrannonomus, slobbered Terry, planting a wet, sloppy kiss on his huge cheek. Ty moaned as he saw his Triceratops lunch plodding through the trees, laughing. You crawling, brawling bug, he growled. Get back to your slurping and burping. Now leave me alone. And off he stormed snarling. Ty crept through the swamp, quiet as quiet. The other dinosaurs stayed still as still. Even the leaves stopped rustling. But a dinosaur can't stay still for long. Ty heard a movement in the trees and saw a long, Long neck. I am ravenous, roared Ty. I'm biggest, I'm baddest, I'm ready for tea. Diplodocus steak looks tasty to me. He roared a big, big roar and... Cuggle you, Tyrannodorbeth. Cooed Terry. Ty groaned as his Diplodocus tea waddled into the reed bed, chuckling. You spoiling, sniffling, dribbling, burbling, gurgling pest, he bellowed. I've had nothing to eat all day because of you. Grr, I'm going home. Ty 
Ty stomped off through the swamp, then pounded across the plain in a great temper. Terry watched him getting further and further away. Then she sat down in a heap and howled. Thud, thud, thud. Suddenly, the ground trembled. Ty redded Dorbeth, squeaked Terry. But it wasn't. It was Spinosaurus. Terry screamed. Spinosaurus was huge, bigger than even her big brother Ty. He had a huge, huge mouth with huge, huge teeth, and his mouth was opening wider and wider. Don't you touch my baby sister, Ty roared and raged. He charged and chased, and Spinosaurus turned and ran as fast as his lumbering legs could go. Then Ty reached down and scooped up Terry in his big brotherly arms. He hugged his favorite very annoying pest of a sister, more tightly than any Tyrannosaurus has ever been hugged. Labu Tyrannodorbus, gurgled Terry. Labu too, Terry Renanormus, said Ty, with a big, big smile. Now let's go get some dinner. All right, I hope that you enjoyed that story. One of the reasons I chose that story is because I had a connection to it. I'm a little sister too. I have a big brother and a few big sisters, and I'm sure that there were times that I might have been a little bit on their nerves, but I think in the end, they were always very protective of me. So I hope that you were thinking about those main characters as we were listening. Now, remember, when we're thinking about main characters and character traits, you're thinking about how would we describe them. These are some examples of some character traits that you can use to describe characters in a story. Instead of just saying they're nice or they're mean or they're sad, we can really be more descriptive than that. For example, instead of saying a character is nice, you might say that they're delightful or they're friendly or they're loving or they're pleasant. Character traits can be positive, like being cooperative, calm, dependable, or fair. They could also be negative, like uncooperative. There are characters that do a lot, characters that do very little, characters that are confident, characters that are nervous. Think about the characters and what they say and they do, and then you can choose which traits would describe them. So, let's think about our main characters, Ty and Terry. First, think about Ty. What are some character traits that you would choose to describe Ty? Well, I thought about four. I, Ty is very big. He's very mean. He's pretty rude to his little sister. He's also very protective of her. Now let's think about Terry. How would you describe Terry? Tell me. I thought about four words I could use to describe Terry, too. She's small, she's sweet, she's young, she's also very scared. Those are our two main characters, and you can see that in a lot of ways they're opposites. All right, now, when, before we do our check for understanding, I want you to make sure that you're thinking about the stories that you're reading at home. Think about those main characters and how you can describe them, okay? Now, let's do a quick check for understanding. At the beginning of the story, why is Ty mean? Now, I've got three answer choices, and you're going to use your fingers to respond. Okay, if you think it's answer choice A, you're going to hold up one finger. 
If you think it's B, you're going to hold up two fingers. And if you think it's C, you're going to hold up three fingers. A, he doesn't want to play with anyone else. B, he is hungry. Or C, someone hurt his feelings. Get your fist ready. Ready? One, two, three, respond. I hope you're holding up two fingers. Ty was mean at the beginning of the story because he is hungry. All right, let's do another one. What happens in the story that causes Ty to change how he's feeling towards his baby sister? A, Terry falls and gets hurt. B, his parents make him apologize. Or C, another dinosaur threatened her. Ready? One, two, three, respond. Answer choice C, another dinosaur threatened her. One more question. Which of the following best describes how Ty's character traits change from the beginning of the story to the end of the story. A, angry to protective, B, hungry to full, or C, hardworking to lazy. Ready? One, two, three, respond. He goes from being very angry to very protective. Excellent. Now, you are going to practice at home with this page here about character traits. Remember to use your thinking voice. As you're reading each sentence, you're going to think about how you would describe the person based on the information that's given in the sentence. Then you're going to choose the character trait from this box in order to best describe them. So here's, this is how you're going to practice this skill at home. All right, thanks for working so hard with me today. Today's code word, you might have guessed it, our code word for today is dinosaur. So you're going to tell that to your teacher whenever they contact you, okay? Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.